keep coming in. Um, this is being recorded, as we say. Um, so I'm going to start off. I'm Sean Casey. I'm at the Media Services in the University Library. Uh, and let me start sharing my screen here. All right, here we go. Hopefully you see something that says digital scholarship support. Um, if this is not your class, then you are in the wrong place. So. Um, like I said, I'm Sean Casey. I'm the Media Services Supervisor. Uh, I'm co-hosting this with Donna Feminella, who is in charge of the uh, makerspace and course reserves here in the library. Um, and we're going to talk about what the library can help you with uh, when you want to make stuff, um, specifically digital stuff, but also some other stuff too. Um, and I should say this is specifically about media services, services and makerspace services. The library has lots of other support for digital scholarship that um, we can talk about a little if you have questions, but um, there's other resources about that as well. So what does media services provide for digital scholarship? Um, and what we're talking about is if you are making something digital. Uh, in our case, that's usually um, you're making some kind of recording, video recording, audio recording, um, you're doing interviews as part of your research. Uh, you want your students to do a an assignment that's not a simple written paper. You want them to um, create a short video or do a podcast or do an interview with somebody downtown. Um, Media Services is here to help you with that. Uh, and we we can help in three different ways. We have the audio visual equipment. Uh, that you might need to do those things. Uh, we can provide instruction on how to use that equipment. Um, so you get the best, the best product that you can. Uh, and we're also happy to do consultations before you um, go out and do your recording. Um, we are happy to consult with faculty in the planning stage, we're happy to consult with students um, and from big conceptual ideas to the practicalities of, okay, I'm gonna be shooting outside, what should I think about? I'm gonna be shooting downtown, what do I have to get together to do that? Uh, it's all about making, uh, making your product as, as good as possible. Um, before I go into that, though, I just I do want to have a little side note that um, the other part of media services is the film and video collection in the library. Um, and so we support digital scholarship there as well um, by acquiring uh, films, documentaries that uh, AU faculty have produced. So if you are a filmmaker, uh, and you have created a film, we are definitely interested in putting that in the library collection. Um, we have AU faculty films on DVD. Uh, we also have them streaming. Um, all of those are available through the library catalog. Uh, and, you know, if it's created at AU, we're, we're interested in acquiring that as well. Um, if your class is doing, um, interesting filmmaking, uh, we you be interested in that as well, your student films. Um, those can uh, go into the um, uh, the library's uh, Audra um, digital collections, and um, those can be, you know, made accessible to, to a much wider audience than if they were just inside your class. So back to audiovisual equipment. Um, so media has about 98 different pieces of AV equipment that we loan out. 
Uh, and those can go out to AU faculty, AU students, AU staff uh, for whatever needs you have. Um, all our equipment is cataloged and searchable in the library catalog, just like the books and the media are. Um, but they're also accessible a, a couple other different ways on the library website. Um, we have lists of our AV equipment by name. Uh, we also have a visual list. So if you don't know um, that the camera you're looking for is a Canon Rebel, um, you can look look through it visually and say, oh, that's that looks like something I'm interested. I can click on it uh, and it'll give you the, the details about it. Um, our, the AV equipment we have is designed for, I would say the, not the expert user, but the user, the user who wants to get a good product and doesn't want to spend an entire semester learning how to use a camera, learning how to use equipment. Um, so it's basically sort of prosumer level. Um, that, like I said, gives gives you the the best product, and it's not. We try to find things that aren't difficult to use. Um, it's um, so that contrasts with like if you're in the School of Communication and you're doing your uh, graduate thesis film, you want a very top end camera. School of Communication has equipment for that. Our equipment is basically for everybody else on campus who are not AV experts. Um, so students who are in SIS or in COGOT or somewhere else who get an assign uh, a non-written assignment, we, our equipment is designed for them. Um, faculty who are doing field work and maybe need to do recording, we can help you out with that as well. Um, or faculty and staff that are going to conferences and um, doing interviews or doing some kind of small small group exercise. Um, we have stuff for that as well. Um, like I said, we don't have very high-end equipment um, and we don't have equipment that would be sort of designed for event support. So if you're if you have a, you're conducting a conference and you need um, to mic a room, you need five mics and a audio system. That's that's not the audio visual equipment that we have. That um, that would be makes a lot of sense. That would be audio visual services on campus who does event support. Um, so ours is ours is recording focused equipment. Uh, and all our equipment, like I said, can be checked out by faculty, staff, and students. Uh, it's all checked out by appointment. Uh, so you can contact us through our website. You can um, email us at mediaservices.com, and we'll make sure you get the equipment you need, make sure you know how to use it, um, which is sort of the first round of instruction that we do with people um, when, when we're contacted. We take the time to make sure that we line up uh, people's needs with the equipment we have, and um, we might suggest one mic over another, one camera over another, um, and give you those. Um, we're we're trying to push more and more that um, people shoot with their cell phones rather than the cameras that we have, and and we're buying equipment to support cell phone use rather than camera use because presumably everybody knows how to use their camera their phone a little better than trying to learn a new piece of equipment uh, and it's all about ease of use so like i said so you get a good product at the end um our in instruction comes in a couple of different ways like i said when we check something out uh we'll take the time with the user to go over the equipment with them uh, to answer any questions that they have, to make sure they're comfortable with it, to talk a little bit about where they're going, what their situation is, and maybe give them some tips if, if they need it. Um, a lot, Lots of users uh, have used this kind of equipment before and are very comfortable with it, and that's, that's fine too. Um, 
we also have uh, quite a bit of online resource as well. So like this is from our uh, from the library website uh, and just lists some of the different kinds of equipment we have, um, how easy or more maybe more advanced that equipment would be. Um, there's little videos with each of the pieces that uh, are a quick get up and go or a quick description of uh, of the piece. Uh, and then we have links to manuals too. So if you're uh, downtown or out in the field or something and you need a, a, a more advanced uh, answer to a question, um, you can look up the manual right there. Um, the Media Services also does workshops here in the library um, that are just open to anybody. So if um, a student has an assignment later in the semester and they start thinking about it, they can come to the, one of the workshops. If they just have a general interest, they can come as well. Uh, and those are things like how to shoot with a specific camera or uh, how to use a tripod correctly or um, how to how to shoot, how to get the best results when you're shooting with your cell phone, that, that sort of thing. This is backwards. There we go. Um, and then the last the last service we have is consultation on uh, digital projects. So if you're a faculty member and you're thinking about us making an assignment that is um, media creation, we're happy to talk to you in the planning phase of that. Um, there's obviously there's a lot more involved than just telling your students go out and shoot a 10 minute video. You know, you you have to think about how long is that actually going to take them to do. It's going to take them more than 10 minutes, that's for sure. Um, then how long is it going to take you to grade that assignment? Uh, how What standards do you use to grade it? What's your rubric for that? Um, what kind of direction, you know, are you giving your students? There's all, there's all sorts of things that go into it. Um, so we're happy to talk to you about that sort of stuff. We're happy to talk to anybody about um, the mechanics of making making their recording. Um, that always depends a lot on the situation, on the moving parts, on you know what are, are they inside, are they outside? What's the lighting like? What's the audio like? Et cetera, et cetera. And so hopefully we can um, give people a few things to think about so that they don't get to their where they're filming and have a bunch of problems to solve um i, I always tell students that you you are probably just going to get one chance to do this recording right if you go downtown and interview somebody you can't go back later and say sorry this audio was uh the levels on it were too low and i didn't get most of what you said um you're going to get one chance so you have to be prepared ahead of time um Another good resource for planning, I have this on this slide. Uh, a couple of years ago, Larry Engel in School of Communication did a talk actually with CTRL about shooting uh, on cell phones. And um, Larry has has done, you know, broadcast documentaries on his cell phone. Uh, and so he's he's got some really good tips on there. Uh, and that video is on the library website if you if you want to look through it. Um, the other thing I always suggest is there's this book in the library collection um, about student created media. And this is by uh, Scott Spicer, who is the media librarian in Minnesota. Um, and this is a great resource if you are starting at the beginning. If you want to make a media assignment, but um, haven't walked through all the all the steps and, and things to think about. Uh, and so it really from beginning to end, it really uh, maps out what uh, what a media assignment could be and, and the things involved in that. Um, so those are the those are the resources media services has for you. If you're doing media, if your students are doing media, um, our mission as part of the library is here to help you with that, and we're and we're always happy to talk to you about that. Um, 
at this point, I am going to turn this over to Donna, and she's going to talk about the makerspace. So thanks a lot. And then we can have questions for both of us at the at the end, I think. So here you go, Donna. Thanks, Sean. I am going to quickly um, share my screen to get to the PowerPoint and start that. Um, so um, kind of as Sean um, shared um, earlier, my name is Donna Feminella. I manage the makerspace as well as course reserves here at the library. Um, and I'm going to um, kind of talk about uh, the makerspace and how we can um, support you all in um, your instruction and classes um, and kind of with the the focus of um, digital scholarship. So who are we? Um, we are a gathering point for tools, materials, resources, expertise in the community. Um, we have uh, worked hard to kind of um, merge these two ideas of kind of um, where we lie within the academics, um, supporting you all in that, that coursework, um, kind of uh, in the tradition of uh, poster printing or where 3D printing kind of sits with that, um, kind of with your assignments. And then also this other aspect of a student life, a, a faculty life, a, 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 a staff member's life, um, that sometimes there is something just delightful about being in a creative mindset um, and to take that relaxing break and um, have that space as well and how that can be included in courses um, and having that space um, for students to, um, to take that time and uh, the importance of that as well. Um, we have three workbenches in the makerspace. Um, our first is craft fabrication, um, which is kind of that traditional way of thinking of crafting, um, the hand crafting tools, our sewing machine, we have paints, embroidery. Um, this is often what students are um, kind of coming to the space to use. Um, and um, it's, it's a nice uh, way to bring students to that space um, for them who um, want to kind of join in that community and build that community um, from just by the mere fact that um, there might be someone who's painting and then someone who's sewing and just kind of that um, collaboration that kind of just uh, exists by being in a space. Um, we also have digital production, which is where our large format printer lives. Um, and this is by far kind of the, um, the most popular of the service itself. Um, we print hundreds and hundreds of posters um, for research conferences, um, for research classes. Um, so this is one of our, our biggest uh, service point. Um, and then our last one is 3D creation, which um, it sure is not uh, surprising, has our 3D printer. Um, and again, within each of these, um, we are, um, trying to figure out where we fit in with you all and then fit in with the, the AU uh, community and a larger scope as well. Um, we are working towards um, doing some more programming um, here in the library. Um, Sean was mentioning workshops for media. Um, there's also um, trying to figure out workshops here um, for introduction for sewing and, and whatnot. So having kind of like a schedule of, of um, kind of uh, teaching um, opportunities. Um, the space itself is uh, student staffed. We are open during the fall and spring semester, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, I myself manage it, manage the space, and then I have another full-time staff member, Michelle, who works under me, also manages this. We are the ones that kind of um, provide more of the instruction. Um, if you're looking for poster design, um, kind of instruction on 3D printing, uh, sewing, um, the students who do staff it, they um, know the basics, but if you do need kind, kind of more um, detailed or um, more in-depth kind of instruction, um, that is where myself and Michelle kind of come into play. Um, the summer and intercessions um, is by appointment. Uh, we are also located on the lower level of the library. Um, I believe in the space that um, it might still be called Campus Coffee, although that's a misnomer because there is no more coffee shop here, um, but we are located on the lower level. I am, I am in here now. So as I was kind of 
thinking about uh, digital creation and how that um, kind of fits within the makerspace. Um, there, it was uh, a little bit of a quandary because in, in some respect, what we are doing here is um, allowing for the tinkering and, and the, um, the, the digital completion of something and we're turning it back into something physical. Um, so we're making it into the production. You're able to see um, what uh, was created in that digital space and then therefore, and then able to see it um, kind of in a tangible format, which is, I don't know, something pretty delightful. Um, so again, I'm gonna kind of lay out our craft, our, our um, workbenches, um, kind of keeping in mind um, what the digital um, space does. There are parameters, obviously, um, when you are creating into the digital space just by the mere soft the software that you're using, um, and um, other um, aspects of it or the equipment. Um, and then here's kind of our parameters or um, potential restrictions, I guess, um, for the the um, production of said digital components. Um, under craft fabrication, where we have our button making. So the digital um, image um, that then becomes that physical button, we have one inch round buttons, we have 1.75 and then two inch round buttons. Um, for the digital production, um, so that research uh, uh, poster for a conference or for a class um, that is then produced into the poster itself, we have um, different roll sizes, so 24 inch, 36 and 42 inch. Um, and then for our 3D printer, um, we have a variety of filament colors. Um, there is kind of a maximum build, um, which is 10 by six by 6.7. Um, so I just kind of wanted to acknowledge that um, and um, put that um, in mind. Um, I think also when, um, we're talking about digital creation. Um, there's something kind of nice that it fits neatly into like the makerspace mission um, in that you are tinkering, you're trying, you're creating, you're um, manipulating things, um, which is exactly um, what we hope you do here in this space um, to have that creative mind going to create something. And as you are trying something new, as you are changing colors, as you um, are resizing, as you are aligning poster um, presentation, um, that that is kind of the ethos of digital. You're manipulating a digital, uh, the digital space. Um, I um, want to kind of focus um, briefly or focus kind of like how we support and what we have done in the past. Um, so for craft fabrication, um, button making, we've definitely supported the student groups. Um, a lot of times students will come in um, to make buttons for, um, to give to their to membership, um, to give out as they are tabling. Um, the button maker is definitely a very um, hot commodity. <laughs> um, students really love um, making them. Um, and uh, yeah, so the student groups has definitely been a big one that we've helped. Um, we've also helped um, in terms of uh, the, uh, a class, um, the Complex Problems Seminar and College Writing Courses. Um, we had a class, those classes come in um, to, uh, they had designed their buttons and we printed it for them. Oh my, oh my, sorry, I cannot, where's my cursor? There's my cursor. Um, I wanted to kind of just share what that class here is the, the digital product um, that then became um the the buttons themselves um large format printer we are obviously help a lot with the um, research courses um specifically the sas 306 research poster conference um and then we have also helped um with just staff and faculty with their own professional development and going to professional conferences here is an example of one of those posters that 
um, was presented, I think, at an anthropology conference. And I believe this poster won an award for, for that design. And then finally, we have 3D uh, creation, which is, again, where our 3D printer uh, lives, um, art history, um, the Renaissance and Perspective course. Um, that professor um, came to us and uh, wanted to um, find or to 3D print um, structures, um, Gothic and Roman um, architectural structures, such as churches and domes to like bring to their class. So they are um, seeing these images um, in, in books or um, kind of online. And um, the, the instructor really wanted them to um, see it in a different way, to be able to kind of tangibly um, get that perspective. Um, the image that was used that we were able to find was um, through Thingiverse, which is an online um, website that's a community build that um, people submit their own uh, designs and you are able to print um, from that um, and get those files from there. And then the last the last one that we um, kind of helped with was uh, for a course, three, ED, EDU 386, which was ex terrorism, extremism, and education course. Um, part of that coursework um, was competing in the Department of Homeland Security program called Event to Prevent. Um, and I believe that this is like the, the scope of it was uh, to design a youth-driven interventions to prevent targeted violence and terrorism. Um, one of the students uh, met with us because um, they were going to be competing in that competition. Um, so we're now gonna kind of like focus on that journey that, that we helped them with and what um, we were able to kind of um, get to at the very end. Um, so, for 3D printing and um, to submit that request um, is through a form. Um, we use the system that AU uses, ServiceNow. Uh, we received that ticket and in that ticket was just an image, which was this fun friend. Um, the idea I believe was a game and this was kind of a component of that game and they wanted to print this 3D print, a model of this, um, that they could then kind of use to to play and teach um, children. Um, and that the hope was that that face um, could change, that we could kind of change out that face. We'd build multiple of these and they could change out the face with happy, surprise, different emotions to it. Um, again, an image um, that is 2D that will not um, be able to be made into 3D as is. Um, so after meeting with that student, um, we were able to um, kind of go through the process for 3D printing. Um, I often, I'm a big fan of Tinkercad, um, which is a um, online program that you are able to create and model 3D objects. Um, so what we did was import that image into Tinkercad and we tinkered around in here. Um, we were able to resize this and um, make this exactly how they wanted. And the end re result being this 3D battery that um, was the translation from that image. Once we got to that point, um, we moved into um, the slicing to actually tell the 3D printer what exactly we needed it to do um, to give it the, the instructions um, for it. Um, the slicing program that we use, there's many. The one that we use is um, connected to our 3D printer, which is the Dremel. Um, so that one is just print cloud. Um, once you are in here, what you are doing is again, going through the process of um, giving the instructions. This is again, where you're able to, um, to tinker. Um, you can resize in here. You can um, tell it what, um, what the cross hatch is, um, like how 
like the um, the infill of it. Um, as you are, when you are 3D printing, you're printing by layer. Um, obviously inside of that, um, you can have it be a solid piece. Um, most of our uh, printing um, to not use as much filament, but still have a solid um, object is to kind of um, to honeycomb it. So it's just kind of printing um, in terms of a honeycomb. So this is again, where you are doing some tinkering, you're playing around with that, this space and, and to get to the final product of this tangible object. Um, once that was done, we were happy with it. We were able to send it to our printer um, and they were able to get their, their model um, that they wanted to bring to competition um, in kind of um, an additive to their presentation for that competition. Um, I did want to leave kind of space and time to, to let you all like share or ask questions. Um, that's kind of the, the scope of the maker space. So it's open for questions. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Has anyone ever like used our resources here? And how did they? I think it's sort of an informal resource use on my part. I have a writing 101 seminar that is web-based um, with, uh, and, and I've directed uh, all of my students towards media services resources and, and, and it's been super helpful, but I, I wanted to sort of formally see the process rather than be informally linking in my canvas to all of the wonderful audiovisual tools and equipment and, and equipment resources that you have. It's been super useful for my students, but I, I wanted to double check that the process was still the same and things like that, just in case I was just accidentally bombarding media services with my students. So no, no, um, no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. So no, it was it was a very helpful summary. Thank you both. Yes. Honestly. Donna, I think there's something in the chat for you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Thanks, Sean. What's the what's the turnaround time on something like um, little uh, battery man? That's a great question. <laughs> um, so turnaround for three D printing um, because there is so much tinkering and potential for things to not go right. <laughs> um, we um, we definitely work with you. So. Um, the, the printing itself, if it goes well, like this was a very small little object, it took probably 30 minutes or whatnot. Um, we usually say kind of like as um, um, on like outright, like to give us a week, um, again, to have that um, space to try it if it doesn't work so that um, you're not held up or something like that. Um, so we do say kind of a week, often the printing, um, can take usually it's as as short as 30 minutes it could take as long as 12 15 16 hours and then for poster printing i don't know if that was also the question for poster printing um we usually say we usually ask for um a uh, 24 hours um kind of that's when it's guaranteed it will be printed if it's submitted on like a friday probably closer to the end of that 8 p.m. hour um, or over the weekend, it will be printed on Monday. Um, but uh, yeah, usually we're able to, especially during the week, have that done within the same day. Good question, thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'm always more than willing to give people <laughs> some time back. <laughs> um, I know we are all at the very beginning of the semester coming up, so we're all busy. So, um, but I do want to leave space for you all to to have that questions and comments.
And if you have questions later, Don and I are always happy to talk with you. 100%. Thank you so much. Thanks, you all. Thanks for joining.